Final example, example four, list all the subsets of x, y, z. Very first subset that we have to remember is the empty set. So the empty set shows up as a subset for everybody. So the empty set is our very first subset. Next one, well, let's look at all of the subsets that have one element inside of it. So x, whoops, I made a really bad bracket there. x is going to be a set just on its own, and that's a subset. Another one would be y. That's another subset. Another one would be z. So those are all of the sets that are one element long and are subsets of x, y, z. Now, we can go with the two element ones, and we can say, all right, well, x comma y, that's going to be a subset. What about x comma z? And then finally, y comma z. And we think about that for a little while and we realize, yep, those are all the sets I can possibly make out of x, y, z that have two elements precisely in them. x and y, x and z, y and z. You could rearrange them in different orders, but remember, since it's a set we're talking about, order isn't important. It doesn't matter the order that it shows up, just that it did show up at all. So those are all of the sets that are going to be two elements long and are subsets of x, y, z. And then finally, we've got x, y, z itself is a subset of itself. Because remember, by the formal definition of being a subset, it just means that all of the elements inside of your set show up in the other set. And every element XYZ shows up inside of XYZ, makes sense, so every set is a subset of itself. Kind of obvious and not that really, you know, interesting, so it's another trivial assertion. It's interesting to think about, but not something that really gains us a lot of knowledge for any specific thing. But it's still an interesting idea and might have other, other connections later on if we think about it a lot. All right, so that gives us a total of eight subsets, and those are all of them. All right. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned some stuff about sets. Like I said before, we're not going to really focus on the ideas that we had here, but what we just did was we built a foundation of pretty much everything else that you're going to wind up ever seeing in math. Virtually all of modern mathematics is built upon the idea of set theory. It can be explained through the idea of set theory. So I just wanted you to get some exposure to this foundation so that later stuff we talk about, like when we talk about functions and some, a whole bunch of things, in fact, we've got some idea of being able to refer back to these sets, pulling things out from sets, going to other sets. Really cool cool stuff here. Set theory is really fascinating. I totally recommend studying it sometime if you get the chance. Um, but I'm glad that you managed to get here and that you've got some idea of how sets work. And we'll see you in the next lesson. Bye. Talk to you later at educator.com.